So we're going to talk flow control and the various methods you can use to control the flow in your fan. Um, there's, there's five that we're going to discuss. The first is an outlet damper. Uh, the second is an inlet box damper. The third is a variable inlet vein damper. The fourth is a variable frequency drive. And then the fifth thing we'll discuss is actually combining the variable inlet vein damper with the variable frequency drive. So our first item is an outlet damper. The most common method of flow control that's been around for years. The outlet damper sits right on the outlet of your fan. So this is your fan housing here, the inlet's here, air is coming out your outlet. So you control flow with typically an opposed blade style outlet damper. So over here on the right, we've got a typical fan curve. You've got volume on the x-axis, pressure on the y-axis. We're going to show what happens when you use an outlet damper to affect your position on this curve. For the sake of this example, let's say you're operating in your system right here at this point. And at this point, you have, let's say, 22,000 CFM and you have 18 inches of water. And that's where the fan is operating in your system because that's what your system requires. But let's say you don't need 22,000 CFM. You wanted a fan for 20,000 CFM at 20 inches of static pressure. So why are you getting 22,000 at 18? Because you don't have enough pressure in your system, so the fan is only operating at 18 inches of static pressure, and you're getting more volume than you need. That's where the outlet damper comes in. So using an outlet damper, you are able to close those blades, and when you do, you will move along the curve this way. So you move back on the volume scale and you move up on the pressure scale as far as the fan is concerned. So your system doesn't need more than 18 inches, but your outlet damper manufactures two inches of pressure for your system to push you back to 20,000 CFM and it cuts down on the amp draw from your motor. So this method is using an outlet damper by itself. It pushes you up the static pressure curve. Concern with an outlet damper is that if you get too far up the curve, you could hit the surge zone, which you want to avoid. So sometimes if you close your damper too much, you'll run into a position where the fan starts surging back and forth and you'll see vibration. You want to avoid that. So now, we'll look at the inlet box damper. So an inlet box goes right here, I'm going to use the blue marker, goes right here on the inlet of your fan. And turns the air into the fan. So the damper is going to sit right here on top of the inlet box. Now this is going to be a parallel blade design. So why is that a parallel blade design whereas the outlet damper was an opposed blade design? Well your inlet box is turning right into a fan and so these are going to be parallel so that they'll start the pre-spin of the air. So as it's coming down into the box, these blades will, will all turn in the same direction, start the rotation of air to get it moving into the same direction that the blades are turning inside the fan. So there's a little bit of help that this provides your fan, and so that's why they're parallel bladed and they get your air spinning in the right direction. So what happens to the curve? Well, theoretically, we'd like to think that an inlet box damper is gonna have such a great pre-spin effect that it's going to help your curve. But in actuality, this is somewhere between an outlet damper and a variable inlet vein damper, which we'll get to later. So, let's say you're operating 
right here with the inlet box damper. And this point is 20,000 CFM and 25 inches of water. And you want to get back to, let's say for this example, 15,000 CFM at 25 inches of water. So your inlet box damper is going to change your system, or it's going to change your static pressure curve a little bit. It's going to have an effect sort of like this. So you're, as you close it, let's say this is 75%, 50%, 50%. Just theoretically. As you close it, you're going to fall and land on one of these curves the further that you close it, but you're also going to slide back to the left the same you would with an outlet damper. So you may be operating here, then here, and then again with an inlet box damper you can reach a point where you're hitting a position of surge in the fan. Because it's not 100% efficient, and you are sliding back to the left on the curve, at some point you're going to hit that danger zone again with an inlet box damper. So whatever that is within your system, depending on where your original operating point is, you need to check and make sure that you don't close the damper into the zone where your fan is going to surge and you're going to have vibration problems. So this is how an inlet box damper works. The third damper we're going to discuss, I'm going to erase this terribly drawn inlet box. The third item is a variable inlet vein damper. Now the three different types of dampers we're analyzing in this study the variable inlet vein damper is far and away the best one. So it mounts right to the inlet of the fan. And within here, you've got a bullet design or a bullet nose design right here, off of which all of the veins are mounted. So you have veins that extend from here up to there, and they go all the way around the inlet vein damper. So how this works, let's draw this a little bit better. You've got veins, and those veins open and shut. And as they shut, they shut in the direction of the air that you want to get your air spinning before it goes into your fan. So they will pre-spin your flow and actually help your wheel that's operating inside the fan. So a VIV interacts with the fan curve this way. So let's say this is your original fan curve. And your operating point is up here a little bit closer to the top. And for this example, let's say 30,000 CFM at 30 inches of water is where you're operating. And you want to move your point back to the left, but you want to maintain somewhere near 30 inches of water. That's where the variable inlet vein damper is superior to the previous two that we've, that we've analyzed. Because you can maintain a fairly high pressure while reducing your volume considerably. Because this is what happens to your curve. You stay up near the top, and then it falls off. You stay up near the top, and then it falls off again. Falls off again. So say this is 75%, 50%, 25%, and then even at 0%, you're going to be bleeding some air. So 0% open. So as you close your inlet box damper, or I'm sorry, as you close your variable inlet vein damper, you are falling onto these curves. Right there, right there, right there, 
right there. And you can see you can maintain a fairly steady pressure while you're closing it all the way back to zero without encountering that danger position of surge because your veins are actually aiding in the fan's performance. So you can get your volumes down fairly low while maintaining your pressure by using a variable inlet vein damper. Okay, the fourth method isn't a damper. It's a variable frequency drive. So what does that do to our curve? Well, first of all, let's erase these curves. Erase our inlet vein damper. I'm gonna erase this outlet damper. So let's say you have no dampers. And you just hook up a VFD to the motor. So this is the junction box of the motor. You run your wires from this VFD into the motor. And you control the frequency into the motor to modulate your speed up or down while the fan is operating. So then we have a curve. There's your fan curve. And let's say you're operating at this point right here. And this point is 15,000 CFM at 40 inches of water. Your system has what's called a system resistance curve. It's going to look somewhat like a normal parabola. So it's going to start down here and it's going to run up through the operating point and continue on like a parabola. Your variable frequency drive is going to ride the system resistance curve. So it is going to physically change your fan's static pressure curve, this one, and it's going to go down or up depending on what frequency you're at. So let's say your original operating frequency here is uh, 60 hertz, is that point. If you want to take your fan to, let's say, 50 hertz, you're going to have a new curve. You intersect your point right there. So let's make a little arrow, call that 50 hertz. What's your performance point at 50 hertz? Well, it's probably going to follow very closely fan laws, depending on your turbulent pressures and your, your other pressures that are in your system. And so the VFD is by far the most efficient way to reduce or increase flow because you aren't putting anything in the gas stream. The three previous methods we discussed Outlet damper, inlet box damper, variable inlet vein damper, all have blades in the gas stream. And so they're all going to carry some inefficiencies with them and add a little bit of pressure into your system. A variable frequency drive is external, running into the motor, and it's just controlling your speed, increasing the revolutions per minute of your wheel or decreasing them. And so you gain all of that energy savings by not adding in that pressure source by going up and down this curve. And your volume is going to adjust, your pressure is going to adjust down, or it's going to adjust up depending on whether you're speeding down or speeding up. So those are the four most common methods by themselves. Now one that the highest possible control while trying to avoid that position we called surge earlier, would be combining our VFD with the variable inlet vein damper. So why is this the best combining these two instead of just using one by itself? Well, you get the benefit of the VFD in going up and down the system resistance curve but you also get the benefit of using that in concert with your VIV, especially in the event that you want to go a little bit up on speed, and maybe you don't have the motor horsepower to be able to do that 
unless you used another to device to limit your flow. So you're after pressure, but you don't want the flow to increase. If you just have a VFD, both are going to go up and both are going to come down when you speed up and you go down. If you have a VFD and a variable frequency, or a VIV, variable inlet vein damper, you can close that as you speed this up. And remember what happens to our curve when we're using the vein dampers. You're gonna come up, let's say you go from 60 hertz, and you wanna speed up to 70 hertz. But you can't operate right there because it takes too much horsepower. If you're using a VIV, your curve can become this. It can come up and you can have a higher pressure rating, but it'll drop faster because you're closing your VIV, let's say, to 60%. And your new operating point is going to be somewhere up here on your curve. So you physically change your system resistance curve because you close the VIV and it now rides up through that point. So those two in concert with one another can give you the, the fullest method of flow control from any of the five that we discussed. That's breakdown on flow control.